Hey guys, Julian here today. I'm going to be showing you how to make a full burial style track. We're going to be talking about the whole arrangement, not just how to make the sounds, but also how to make it work over time. As usual, you can get this full track, the entire project file, samples, mini, presets, everything that you just heard in the intro that you're about to see in this video is available right in the top of the description on my Bandcamp. It's just $10 and you get a really solid track template to work with. Plus, it really helps keep me going so I can keep bringing you guys new videos every single day. So yeah, thank you so much for the support, guys. Every sale really helps. Plus, you get a really high-quality track template for you to work with. And yeah, let's dive in. So, this is the track. What we've got right here along the top, we're at 136 BPM. And it starts with actually a little bit of noise. So you can see just a bit of vinyl noise layered together. We have one that's like kind of more crispy and one which is a bit more sizzly. And that's kind of how you want to do these. Typically I find if you just do one, it's not really enough to really get that like authentic sound. Like it'll sound kind of like Mario, but you're really not going to get that real like crunchy like like that right there where you just have both of these going so you want to try to layer two or three together and then the secret to it is really that it's going to just be again like really carefully selecting two or three that fit into different places like this one more crispy this one more sizzly put them together and you have a perfect bed of noise and those are pretty much just going to go through the whole track i think if you like have them cut out like let's say we just get rid of these here you know it's going to kind of break the illusion so you want to keep those on the whole time then we have the pad So this pad is actually simpler than you would probably think. Keep in mind, each of these chords is no more than three notes. So I've talked about this a bit recently, but when you're making these kind of future garage pads, the sort of like sad, wispy sort of thing, I think a lot of people think that it's super complicated and it's like a lot of notes happening and that's basically why it sounds so good and why it's so hard to recreate. That's not actually the case. The truth is, it's actually like less notes that are just telling a really good story together, if that makes any sense. So it's like, for example, here. Like that right there is a little melody. So you're getting that. But then that's juxtaposed against. Right? So if you combine... You can see, like, it's actually just these different melodies happening like within the chord progression even here you know so that's something that you really want to keep in mind is that like it's not actually about making it really complicated or having like a huge orchestral string arrangement it's actually just about like having maybe two or three different little melodies happening within your chord progression that are going to tell the story when they're combined and it helps to have contrast for example, here it's like, right, the low notes are going up, but then the high notes are actually going down. So those two happening, you know, that alone is a lot of what you're hearing. So you got to keep that in mind, you know. It's not just about having, like, a bunch of crazy notes in here. And then for the sound on this one, it's made using operators. So this is actually an FM pad. I really like using FM to design these pads. And the secret is basically, so here's the sound. Right, so it's a saw wave with a little bit of FM from a square wave and then another saw wave and then a sine wave on top of it. You can see they're all at different octaves. And I have them detuned a little bit as well. And then we just have a bit of the filter. And you can see we have a tiny bit of actually like a pitch. Oh, oh. It's 
going on here. But yeah, so it's actually a pretty simple, like basic pad sound. But then you put it through a little bit of chorus, which is actually 100% wet, so pretty good amount of chorus. And then the secret here is the 100% wet reverb. See, because then you put it through that, and then you keep it, like, not too long. Like, you don't want to turn the decay time, like, that would mess it up. Because then you're just going to be sitting there listening to one chord forever. But if you just set it like that, there you go. And it can kind of take that more basic pad sound that you're going to get just working with the synth. And kind of give it more texture. Because I think that's a big thing here too. Is a lot of people are like, well, okay, great. You can make the chords. But how do you make that sound really sound like the sampled burial pads? Well, there you go. Simple trick, but it's going to give it a lot of space. While also giving it that texture. And then finally, we just have a low pass. You can see that's pretty much constantly moving. So that's another thing with the arrangement of this track. You know, it's never just going to have, like, your pad sitting in one place doing the same thing for too long. Like, even if it's playing the same chord progression, there's lots of movement with this filter here. And the other thing I'll show you with this is over here. It's actually the same progression, but I took these notes. And put those up in octaves. So, yeah, it's just kind of taking exactly the same MIDI, but just making it feel a little bit more, like, full and exciting when we get to this ending part here. Then we have the bass. Now, the bass is going to be pretty simple, right? It's mostly just going to follow the chord progression. I recommend that you write your chord progression before you do any of this. And then when you go to make your bass, it's just taking just those root notes. Now, for the sound, there are a few different ways that you can make the sound. But basically what you're going for is you want a really fat, subby bass that isn't just a sine wave and has a lot of movement to it. And something that's really good for that is what's called a Reese bass. This is a classic bass sound, you know, from like way back in the day with dance music. All it is, is it's just two saw waves detuned, right? So we've got those right here inside a wavetable. And then this is the part that you can kind of get creative with or is a bit optional at times. But then you're going to low pass. So you can see we're taking this big fat waveform, which has like a lot of low end to it. And then we're basically just soloing the low end. You can also bring the resonance up. And there you go. And then, yeah, you can do a lot of different types of filtering. But with this style, you're typically just going to want a nice low pass filter like that so then we've got that and then i just have a bit of drum bus and this high pass filter just brings it in and out at the beginning and end then we have these granular reverb layers which are audio and i'll just play you all three of them individually here's the first one the second one And then the third one. And so what these are, actually these are some recordings that I've done using this mothership right over here. The pedal board. I've been doing a lot of stuff with this recently. I'm probably going to make some more videos about it soon. Definitely let me know if you guys want to see me make a video about how I make the guitar pads that I always talk about. But that's what these are. These are actually just like basically what I do is I don't like to just go and be like working on a track and then sit there and record something right then. Instead, these are actually like these recordings I've done. I have a ton of these. And what I'll do is I'll just sit there. Yeah, you can see I've got them um, right here, these granular reverbs. There's also a few other versions of it in here. But basically, I just record myself kind of like tweaking different parameters, you know, playing some different stuff. It doesn't even matter what key it's in, as long as you just have it all in one key that you can kind of you know, transpose it to whatever key your track is in. But then basically that's what these are. You record those in a separate session, kind of like, you know, just tweaking different stuff, you know, like, I like a lot of different, like, granular pedals where it's kind of like grabbing pieces of what you're playing and then you can kind of flip through it and mess with that sound. A lot of that is going on with these. But basically these are just some recordings that I've done. And then when you're going and you're making a track, you can go and you can actually bring them in. 
And then it's very simple processing, right? It's just like a little bit of reverb, you know, maybe a high pass if it needs it. This one has a volume automation in the intro. We got a low pass automation on this one. But it's actually going to be like a pretty straightforward process. And I think this is the best way of doing it. One, because it's the most fun. Because I think if you start a track and then like this thing, it wants to do what it wants to do. It wants to do its own thing when it wants to do it. So if you let these all kind of like create something really cool and then bring that into your track and kind of get different random inspiration from that, I think that's going to sound better. So that is one reason why it's good. But also, it allows you to just kind of like have something like throughout the track that's constantly changing, you know? This was me sitting there only listening to this. I wasn't tweaking anything else while I was working on this. So it's a lot of like... You have slight variations, and you skip to different parts, and it's never going to sound exactly the same twice. And that's really important for this. You really need that, like, randomness. So this is a really great way of doing that. I definitely recommend playing around with some pedals. You also don't really need pedals to do this, too. Like, you could kind of just do this in Ableton, you know, tweaking some different stuff and kind of recording what you're doing live. Definitely let me know if you guys want to see a video on that. But, yeah, these, like, granular reverb layers, very good way of creating some background pads. And then we have the drums. So you can hear it's a pretty nice little groove happening here. So it actually starts down here with our kicks, you can see. So we have three different kicks. I'll play it with the rim shots so you can hear. What it is, it's just basically three different kicks, kind of creating one groove. And you notice it's all eighth notes too, there's actually no sixteenth notes. And the idea here is that different samples kind of give you a different groove, like this one. It's like a little bit longer and more like earthy, so that goes really well right on the one where you just, you want that big like boomy. But then, like, these shorter ones fit in really well in the other places. And you'll notice also the shorter ones are high pass a tiny bit. That's how I do it. I would start with just, like, the one. Then you get that going. Then you get the third one. And then now they're all grooving together. And that's going to sit really well underneath all these drums and create that groove that you want. And yeah, then we have the rim shots. Which, it's basically, we have three here. So we have these two. Just hitting right on the two. And then the second one here comes in. So you get a bit of call and response there. And it's a subtle thing. You don't really hear it that much in the beat. But if you don't have it, if you try to just do this with like one of these. You know, it's not quite as much groove as when it's all. You know, when it's the three of them. And those are just going through a low pass, which is really just on there. Yeah, you can ignore that. So then we have the hi-hats. Which is basically just this one. You can hear just like a nice standard hi-hat on the upbeats. And then we have this drum rack. Just to fill in a little bit of space behind it. And this, with this hi-hat, you can see a little technique here that I like to do for these. Which is basically, you can see, I have a random LFO on this low-pass filter here. So it's subtle. You don't really hear it happening that much. But basically now, the filter frequency is just moving a little bit each time you hear it. Right? Sometimes it's a bit brighter, sometimes it's a bit lower. And you can hear it gives the beat a lot more life because this is just never exactly the same thing twice. And on the group of the hi-hats, don't really have anything. And then we have this crunchy percussion. And so these are all the little background sounds. Like we have our... Shaker. We have some rim shots playing together. 
So these two rim shots are kind of like one groove. And then we have these three. These are some loops, some of my loops that I've chopped up. And you can see these are pretty straightforward, you know, processing wise. The main, I think, the kind of interesting thing that's happening is this one. Has like a distorted low pass on it where I've got the resonance up a little, so you get that like kind of crunchy thing going on there with these. There's a little bit of a low pass filter. But basically, these are actually from some tech house packs that I made. And I wanted to do this to show you guys that, you know, there's not some magical source for these drums. It's not like there's this this one place that everybody just goes to that you don't know about to get these kinds of drums. It really doesn't matter what you use. You know, at the end of the day, like, a drum sample is a drum sample. Whether it's in a pack that says Future Garage on it or if it's in a pack that says Tech House, whatever. I mean... Like, dude, they're all kind of the same, right? So, I'm doing this to show you that. That, like, you really don't need to pull these from any special place. Like, it's just having, like, the sounds in there and having them groove together and, like, chopping up loops like this to get that kind of... Just more exciting sound where they're playing together. So, it's that, but then it's the fact that you have this groove. And this groove. Kind of, like together like kind of playing off of each other that's what creates the sound and then underneath that we just have a bit of foley percussion that I've chopped up and then on the group of that so you see we just have a little bit of echo not that much a little bit of drum bus I have a low pass filter which has no automation but it's just cutting off some of those bright highs to make everything a little bit more crunchy and then we have this low pass filter, which you can see is just on there. No reason. Then we have this Foley percussion, just one more layer. You know, just a little bit more stuff to kind of fill that out. I felt like it just needed this at the end. And then it's basically all these little things moving together, like these, and these. That's what's creating the sort of like burial drums, so to speak. So then after that, we move down to here. So these are just some different effect sounds that I have. A lot of these, you know, a lot of these are actually made using the same like granular reverb samples I showed you guys before. Like we got like... You know, like that sound, that was something I made with the guitar. This thing is also with the guitar. But then some of these are different things. Like some of these are like these little, like some room noise I recorded. Some of these are like these cool, like. You know, it's just all these little sounds in the background, even like some vocals. Yeah. I have like these effects that I made a while ago. Some of them are vocals as well. These are like some of my vocals that I recorded. So it's basically just all these little sounds. And the idea is that it's constantly happening. There's always something going on here. But it's never like the same thing twice. And it's never like just repeating a loop. And basically having like all this stuff up top that I've already showed you. You know, that on its own is going to get a little bit boring and rigid. So basically, what you do is just bring this stuff in kind of happening more, like, sparsely. Like, kind of just spread out throughout the track. With a bit of echo and a high-pass filter. And then it's because you have kind of these, like, random quote-unquote things happening against the more, like, steady stuff. There you go. That is what's going to create that feeling. And it's not that hard to do. It's just you have to be really good at both of them. You have to be able to get really, really good samples that are going to fit well into the track. And then also being able to make, like, that really good drum groove, you know? So that's really what's hard. It's not hard to do this in theory, like, right? Because it's just dropping in samples. I mean, you could do it by random. You could literally just, like, look away and just grab samples and just drag them into different places on the actual arrangement view. But 
having one having really high quality samples to work with and two making stuff that's going to fit well against the other stuff there you go that's where the challenge comes in and then the last thing down here is this little whoa so this is really really subtle it's just in there in the background it's i'll show you what it is it's this vocal sample I took the very end, just to, oh. And then you can see I've got it going through a bandpass filter and then a bunch of ambience, like the echo and reverb. And then that just hits every two bars in the background in the track. You can see there's one that's a little bit longer and then one that's a little bit shorter. And then you just have that little, oh. Popping in and out. And it's a really subtle thing. But if you have this, it's really going to make a big difference because it's going to make your background just feel a lot more, like, alive. Like, people won't always know that it's happening, but they are definitely hearing it and they're really feeling it. Oh uh, yeah, so that was going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets, literally every single thing from this video is available at the top of the description. And if you're a patron, on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. Thank you so much for all the support, guys. You know, all the sales on this really help keep me going. Plus, you get something that I have not seen anybody else do on the internet. Literally... This full track template that actually sounds, you know, as good as the pros. It's all available at the top of the description for you to go and make your best music that you've ever made. Thank you so much for all the support, guys. And I will see you tomorrow with another video.